Part 3, The Hypercross. The tesseract shape in 2D signifies the motion of a 3D cube along the 4D axis of time. The nested hypercube shape in 2D signifies the stationary midpoint of this motion as the shadow of a 3D model where the two cubes are not of equal volume. At antipode point, seen from above one of the cube's edges, rather than sides as in the nested position or corners as in the tesseract pattern, there appear to be twin cubes of equal volume, one above the other below. This final form was known to ancient metaphysicians, who designed a shape to signify the antipode hypercube in flat 2D space using two hexagons overlapping, such that the upper hexagon's lowest corner overlaps the midpoint of the lower hexagon, and the lower hexagon's upper corner overlaps the midpoint of the upper hexagon. This shape signifies the antipode hypercube seen from above a corner as a 3D model, then recast as a shadow onto a 2D plane space, also from a point of view directly above one corner of the 3D model. They called this model Hakabalah, meaning literally, the body of God. The modern form of this ancient lattice pattern shows the same essential shape with one significant discrepancy. The middle pillar of Sephiroth points on the vertical axis have slipped down such that now the lowest point is subtended below the lower hexagon. This symbolizes, for the hypercube, the same unfolding idea as may be applied to tessellating the sides of a three-space cube. Here we see how the six sides of the standard regular cube unfold into a single plane space pattern as a tessellation of the six square-shaped sides. The resulting shape is commonly called the Calvary cross pattern such that four of the square sides surround a fifth, while below the lowest of these is subtended the sixth square side. When a hypercube is unfolded into a 3D tessellated pattern, the result is called a hypercross. Because the shadow cast by the nested hypercube is the same in plane space as that of a three-space cube seen from directly above one side, the same effect should be expected to occur for the shape of the hypercross, such that it would cast a three-space shadow of multiple cubes, but in two-space assume the same form as the unfolded cube, that being the common Calvary cross. It is also believed that when a hypercube is unfolded into a three-space shape, that the form it would take would be comprised of eight cubes, one for each corner of the standard three-space regular cube. This reasoning yields a 3D version of a Calvary pattern hypercross, where each of the six sides of a central cube expand into six cubes added to the original seventh, wherein the eighth cube is subtended to the lowest cube. Just as the 2D Calvary cross pattern is not a single source shadow, but shows the tessellation of all six square-shaped sides of the 3D cube, the two-space shadow of the morphing tesseract appears the same as that of a rotating cube, and likewise the shadow in two-space of the 3D Calvary pattern model of a hypercross should be expected to show the regular tessellation of six squares of the flat two-space Calvary cross motif. However, the shadow in two-space of the 3D model of a Calvary version of a 4D hypercross 
does not show the same shape as the regular 2D Calvary cross of six squares. Instead, the shadow in two space shows up as a simple five square cross where four squares of equal area surround a central fifth. Thus, the actual shape of the hypercross is not a Calvary pattern with a subtended eighth cube below the lowest cube of six surrounding a central seventh on all its square sides. It is actually, as shown here as a 2D depiction of a 3D model, only the six cubes surrounding the central seventh. However, there does exist an extra eighth cube. Only in this form, seen from above the hypercross corner, as opposed to along its edge, as in the Calvary arrangement, the eighth cube is hidden in plain sight in the spaces between the six cubes surrounding the central seventh. The eighth cube appears as a framework shadow in two space between the shadows of the six cubes and the shadow of the central seventh in the form of a Roger Penrose or impossible cube so called for being an optical illusion in which the edges of a regular 3D cube are solid but appear such that the background legs overlap those usually seen in the front. When such an impossible optical illusion shape as the Penrose cube casts a shadow in two space, it is the same shadow as that which would usually be cast by the shape of a regular 3D cube. Just as we saw the antipode cubes as paired hexagons in the diagram of Hakabala, so in the 2D shadow of the 3D model of the 4D hypercross, we see a hexagon shape cast from above the corner of an impossible cube. Part 4